I live not too far away. I took the, the metro here. Uh, at night, I, I live by the red line. At night, I call it the comet because it comes once every 76 years. <laughs> for, for many years, we all know, for many years, it was just science men. And then they said, fine, fine, we'll allow a science lady. And the first science lady was Marie Curie, who's the only person to win two Nobel Prizes in two different fields <laughs> of science. And she discovered radiation. And she discovered the only substance harder than diamonds. It's an avocado from Trader Joe's. <laughs> So the science men, they said a couple things. They said uh, every year they look at all the numbers at the end of the year, and it turns out most of the time, for most years, July is the hottest month of that particular year. And I thought back when I was a kid, all right? Fourth of July, always hot, always July. So the evidence <laughs> bears that out. July is hot. Okay, I'm not arguing with that. What I'm arguing with is what they said next, because what they said next was July of last year, the last July that we had, was the hottest month on Earth ever. And that's a big thing to say, because we're not quite done with ever yet. <laughs> it's a little premature to be handing out trophies, okay? We got a long time. Ever for the Earth began when the Earth began, which was 45 billion years and two and a half years ago. I've done all the research <laughs> and talked to the specialists who specialize in that specialty and they've told me that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old and that was two and a half years ago, so you would have to add that. <laughs> <laughs> and the Earth will continue to exist for another five to seven billion years. Minus the two and a half years <laughs> we've already used up. At which time the sun turns into a red giant and consumes the earth. So that, that spread, that is ever for the earth. And we're not even halfway done. And you don't crown a champion before mid-season. All right, let's see. <laughs> let's see how it plays out. It might not even be the hottest month of the decade, okay? And I'm, I'm not a gambling guy, but if I were, I'd put all my money on Probably the last month of ever. I bet you <laughs> that's going to be the last month. So the sun expands 250 times its size and turns into a 5,000 degree ball of nuclear fusion, vaporizing every atomic bond that holds the Earth's very existence together. That's got to be hotter than that. <laughs> July was hot, all right, but I distinctly remember not vaporizing. And I have great ideas on how to fix global warming, but my ideas are so high over people's heads, I'll actually see them roll their eyes upward to try to see my... <laughs> Here's one way to fix global warming. Everybody needs to run their air conditioning all the time with their windows open. It's a no brainer which is how I thought of it. Right. You're hot, you turn on the air. If the planet's hot, doy, just turn on the air. What, what could be obviouser than that? All right, I got the idea when I saw a cat go from the sun to the shade. Yeah. When hot, add cold, you'll be less hot. I don't know what part of this flow chart is tripping all you guys up. <laughs> Even Mr. Pickles has it figured out. Right? It's not rocket surgery, it's a bubble. <laughs> And here's another great idea I thought of when I was telling you that idea. Huge, huge ceiling fans outside. I don't know how they'll attach, but big ceiling fans outside will vent all the hot air up and create shade for everybody underneath. I just killed two birds with one stone because that's how I roll. I'm Robert Mack and I kill birds. I heard, I heard uh, probably one of the world's famousest Sciencemen speaking about global warming, and he said that uh, rising global warming is causing rising temperatures in the polar caps, and the polar caps are melting, and the sea is rising in the Arctic. And got very, very depressed because he's a scienceman, and he should be able to say Arctic. All right, it's it's six letters. There's a big difference between Arctic and Arctic. If you're a professional communicator, of which being good at, I am one of them. <laughs> People expect you to be articulate, and so you're going to have to be articulater than Arctic if you want people to hear your message about global warming, all right? So why don't you go back to the library, Neil, okay? And 
<laughs> if you know that there's a flood coming in, in the Arctic, well then do what Noah did and build a big old Ard. And, uh, <laughs> I went to the National Zoo hoping to see some national animals, you know, like a pigeon or a sewer rat. But, <laughs> everybody there is lined up to see what? Panda. Panda, which is not a national animal. <laughs> it's an immigrant and it's stealing jobs from <laughs> Maybe I'm old fascist, but I think <laughs> the national zoo should be kept pure with national animals, and then we could build a separate yet equal international zoo <laughs> for all of those guys. All right, Canadian geese and uh, German shepherd, <laughs> Spanish fly. <laughs> Polar bears are extincting. Did you know that? <laughs> extincting? Why are you telling me? I'm telling you. Glaciers are melting. That's just the tip of an iceberg, something like that, the science guy who's going pretty fast, but they're dying now. Some branches of the government say they're gonna help, and I'm a little skeptical, because for years, black bears and bears of color have been hunted and killed for years. <laughs> no one's done a thing about it, but the second that the polar bear is barely threatened, the White House drops everything. Now, there are physiological differences between the bear races. Everybody knows it, all right? Polar bears evolved in the Arctic, and there are no trees in the Arctic, so they never learned how to climb trees. So as they evolve, they're missing certain muscle groups in the back, which is why white bears can't jump. 